Hey everyone, welcome back. This here is my RD6018, and I love this little power supply. Well, Banggood has sent me another one, the RD24, which I assume will be just as good. Problem is, the RD6018 is getting its power from, well, all the way over there. And instead of running a whole bunch of wires, I didn't have thick enough gauge, that's why there's four wires, to this one, I figured I would uh, wire these to a common junction box and set it up right here, and so I can just plug and unplug these read-in units as needed. So to do that, instead of just soldering wires together, I made myself PCB. And PCB Way sent them out with a whole bunch of cool stuff like, you know, these resin 3D printed logos and some new PCB rulers, which is awesome. But here are the PCBs themselves. And the goal of these things is to combine um, banana plugs, these guys, soldered directly to the board. Now you can actually clamp them to the board because they will make contact. And that should be enough for uh, transfer. However, I think I want to solder them down and, you know, get a really good connection like so. And so let's see if we can get those soldered. And uh, yeah, so these guys will will go out to the uh, read-in power supplies. And these guys here, these little screw terminals, which are raised and protected, they will go from the wire. And then I can even have another one on the other side to have a couple of these banana plug jack things. These things will also be useful if you have something like a 12 volt power supply. So you can actually feed it in on you know this side and then have multiple outputs with bananas. So yeah, let's set this up and see how easy it is to solder. All set up in the vise here and I'm gonna give this a shot. No guarantees this is gonna work got the soldering iron hot, uh, 450 degrees Celsius. And I'm just gonna press down from the middle, press down hard and hopefully uh, with enough time, it'll warm up the pad enough that uh, we'll be able to melt solder and we'll get solder underneath there. Um, however, this is not guaranteed to work by any means. It takes quite a lot of heat to, um, to melt solder with a big piece of metal like this. We're also relying on the contact between the piece of metal and the uh, pad. So we'll see if it works. And I also didn't put any thermal reliefs because this is a high current application. So yeah, no guarantees. If you had like a little, um, like a little uh, butane jet lighter thing, might be a good time to use it, but I'm hoping having my uh, iron cranked up real high will help. And also, hopefully, I'm not jamming my iron too hard into this banana plug, and so that it won't, uh, you know, get stuck in there. So here it goes. Solder is starting to melt, and the goal here is it needs to melt and wick underneath the banana plug. It's just barely hot enough. Oh, well, some did go wick underneath. It is liquid underneath there.
definitely seems to be hotter on one side than the other. All right, we got some in there. See what happens if I try to lift this up. Yeah, the binding post is coming with it. So I'm gonna have to grab some um, ceramic tipped uh, pliers if I can find some tweezers. And try to hold it down. Here's some. That should wick heat away pretty quick. And it should solidify. That is solidified. So that's one done. And I won't torture you watching the other ones get done because it could take quite a while. Okay, I think I got the strategy. So to make this a lot easier. I'm just gonna preheat the uh, the spot where I'm dropping the the uh, banana thing, and I'm gonna put a lot of solder on there. Start getting the stuff going. And while my iron is still on there, I drop the banana plug, and then I'm just gonna stand the iron up and basically press down and when this gets hot enough that it melts the solder then all I do is just add a little bit more solder for a fill and then use the uh, ceramic tip uh, tweezers to hold down the banana plug and then I can lift the iron off. Now obviously this is a lot easier if you have an iron with a much bigger uh, tip so that you can actually get a lot more heat through but it is doable with this 60 watt iron there we go the, so the solder is liquid underneath it now there we go I'm just gonna see if I can just add a tiny little bit no, it doesn't seem to be. So now I'm just going to hold it down with the tweezers. I'm going to give the iron a little twist. I'll lift it off. And then let that cool. And then there we go. So that is a perfect connection with the banana plug. And I'm just going to actually fill in this side like that. And there we go. Now this is uh, actually quite hot, but I need to switch it around. So let me set this up differently so we can uh, solder these guys on. Got it set up sideways now, and I'm just going to flip it around. And these guys should fit in my custom footprints here. There we go. And now uh, in, order, in order to hold this on in place, what you do is you touch the iron on the side like so. a little solder then reach back around press it up hard on the board and then go solder another leg and that won't move now I'm trying to get enough solder into the joint here Move on to the next one, and so on, and so on. And redo that first joint. There we go. And then we just flip this around, and we can do the other side. 
And there it is. So now I can have my banana plugs, a positive and negative, and I can also connect to either end of this. And on the bottom, uh, if I find that these copper tracks are dropping too much voltage, I can always, uh, you know, kind of run a wire in between all of these, or you can access the back of these for other things. Um, and you can also hook up two positive cables, two negative cables um, to make sure that there's no voltage drop in the wires. Now the only thing is if this sits on my bench and especially the read-in, these things are actually powered by you know up to 70 volts because it's a 6018 that has to drop down the, the, the voltage. Uh, so I don't want this just laying on the bench somewhere where you know metal things can go across. So I've designed this uh, 3D printed little case. And so all you need to do is you slide it in here and it clips in quite nicely. Nice positive feel, has two screw holes here. And I put two screw holes in the back so you can screw it onto uh, something like, I'll probably screw it on my background over there. So let me get some screws, screw this in, and then we have to work on getting the wires ready to plug into here. Don't mind the war zone in here, um, but I did mark the wires where they need to be cut. I already have the box mounted on the wall here, so I'll just have to, you know, slide this in and screw it in afterwards. Uh, so make sure your power supply is not active when you do this. That could send fireworks uh, through the system. Probably not going to be a good thing. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, put two of these wires. These are uh, 14 gauge, I believe or 12 gauge, not 100% sure, 14 gauge, uh, and they're twinned up. I think I'm just gonna strip both ends and stuff both ends into the same uh, adapter here. So into the 14 gauge, these um, wire strippers provided by another maker on one of his awesome uh, mailbags from Florida. I asked him, he actually asked me what kind of stuff I wanted in the next one, but I said kinda enough's enough because I feel bad that I didn't use half the stuff he sent last time. Uh, not that I won't use them, it's just that I haven't yet, and at the same time it's like, you know, I feel bad for, uh, you know, taking up resources that uh, I'm not using yet. So once I, once I use the stuff he sent already, which will be at some point, this fit up over yeah always forget the heat shrink uh, once I do use up the stuff he sent then uh, he can send some more but before that I should uh, you know use the stuff he sent get a good crimp on that that looks good slide up the heat shrink and then I could just heat it up and shrink it down I have to say I've used these uh, strippers quite a bit now and because of that, they're actually getting dull. I don't think I've ever used strippers uh, enough to dull them. I mean, copper is relatively soft metal, but I managed to dull the wire strippers, stripping literally only copper. Okay, slip another one of these on. So the reason I am just using uh, two wires in the same uh, spade terminal is just so I can save on spots on my board. Not that it's needed, but just because I want to. So put the, put the heat shrink on, get it lined up, get my hot air rework station. And this is that uh, triple layer uh, heat shrink with the uh, glue on the inside. And it's the, so sorry, double walled glue on the inside and uh, three to one shrink ratio. Have a link to all the stuff in the description as always. Slide this up. 
Shrink it down. There we go. No, that should fit just perfectly. Negative and positive, sort of like that. I did leave uh, more length on the negative because it'll be the one facing downwards. So negative and positive, sort of like that. That works out. Uh, this guy here, I'm going to have to switch these over to bananas. And then I'll have enough room for the next one to go on. And that should work just fine. And so this is it uh, over here doing its job, supplying power to the RD6018, which I love so much. Um, the only thing with this one, the RD6018 is being fed by that uh, 65 volt uh, power supply. And therefore you probably want it plugged in and then you turn on your power supply because if you just plug the wire into this, there's a massive arc. Uh, which will burn your connectors in no time. But the cool thing about this project is that let's say I want to split off the 70 volts for other stuff or 65 volts for other stuff. I have the exposed terminals here that I can put another one beside or I can even build up another one of these boards which I have here. Um, and then I can actually hook it up to the terminals of the RD6018 and I can feed multiple devices from one power supply even better than that since this is to have multiple of these power supplies that means that really I can have a couple of these power supplies feeding a couple of devices each uh, for example it's very common in the Arduino world to need a whole bunch of 5 volt um, 5 volt capabilities for multiple Arduinos and accessories well with a board like this you can just chain a couple of them together and prototype with a whole bunch of 5 volt circuits so I hope you like the idea of these little compact boards. And if you want to get your own, check the link below for the PCBWay link and the STL for the case will be there as well. Thanks for watching.